So this might be a bit of overkill for a, a little trip around uh, the Lake District but we are um, just doing a bit of a test for our trip in Canada as well with the trailer. We have done um, tandem and trail uh, touring before. As you can see from this image, we rode back from Spain all the way to the UK with a uh, trailer and tandem. It was a really good e experience. Well, we're leaving Carlisle now on a wet morning on his way to Cockermouth. Trail is still there? Yep. <laughs> well, you've got your typical uh, bike paths coming out of the uh, out of Carlisle, which you get uh, around all the urban areas, which, you know, generally quite nice, would you say? Yep. Uh, and green. Next to the river. So, yep. Nice little start. So the reason for this trip, well, it's Easter, it's a holiday, we've got a few days off. So uh, we thought what better way to get a bit of practice in for our Canada trip, so that's why the trail is with us. No, it's massively overkill for a trip like this, but uh, just wanted to make sure that everything works. So we just got a couple of hundred mile bike ride over a few days, just to make sure that we're set up for the summer. And uh, we're going to be taking in a few of the uh, passes in the Lake District. We're going to do uh, Hard Knot and uh, Rhinos, which I've done on solo bikes before, but we're going to tackle it on a, a loaded tandem just to see if we can get a taste of the, uh, of the steeps in Canada that we're going to have in the summer. Lovely quiet roads. Mm. I'm going up over there in the distance. Look how beautiful that is. We're just filling up on some sweet delights at Lidl. And now we're on our way to the youth hostel at Eskdale. For navigation, I generally leave it up to ride with GPS. It's brilliant for plotting your routes. So what I've done is I've just done the uh, start and end points and basically ride with GPS just tries to keep you on as many bike routes as possible. So you can see here that we're actually following the uh, Whitehaven C2C route in the opposite direction because we're going towards Whitehaven and then we're going to come around and cut back in and then make his way to Eskdale. Um, so yeah, ride GPS, excellent navigation tool. Absolutely lovely morning's ride today. No rain so far, which is different to yesterday. Beautiful views. Lovely day. I've just opened my licorice all sorts and these have just come charging over. Look at them, charging over. 
The farmer wouldn't be happy if I gave you licorice all sorts. Just spotted a nice cafe on the map. 2.4 mile at Ennerdale Bridge. That's our next stop for a nice coffee. And it was all downhill. Took us about two minutes. The Gava Cafe. Just had us refuel at the cafe and look at this for a view. So we just come all the way up from, from down there and we're just continuing going up a little bit and then hopefully we're going to drop down into Estia, well a few more ups and downs, the little ones and then should be at Estia, uh, youth hostel in a couple of hours or so but look at this view So we've just stopped at Eskdale Youth Hostel. Another wet start, so we're in as waterproofs. And we're just going to do Hard Knot Pass and Rhinos Pass down into Ambleside. And then on to Kendall today, a short ride today. Um, fun little fact though, Hard Knot Pass and uh, Rhinos Pass are actually less in height than um, all the hills back home, you know, Hepton Stall and uh, Wivins and all that are actually higher than Hard Knot Pass. So, fun little fact. That would be why every 21 days back home, my commute to work and back, I do Everest, which I find absolutely crazy. So, they're not as, uh, they do have some steep corners, these passes though, 30% in places apparently, 30%. So even though I have done these passes on a single bike before and managed to ride them, uh, I don't think we will be riding them on this. <laughs> we may be doing a bit of pushing. So there's snow up on that hill there. That's Hard Knot Pass, which is our aim for the next how many minutes? <laughs> 10 minutes! Ten <laughs> Hard not pass with its 30 percenters coming up. 30 percent suitable for light vehicles only. Does <laughs> that, this clarify? That counts as out. Does that count as a light vehicle? Deep breaths. We've done hard knot and now we're just making our way down and then up rhinos and then look at all that snow up there. Cold. Part two, rhinos pass, uh, yeah, rhinos pass. So down there, just where Rachel's pointing, the uh, country file presenters are there. Don't know what they're filming, but uh, yeah. And we are just going up Rhinos Pass now. Nearly at the top of uh, Rhinos Pass. No pushing so far. No pushing on Rhinos so far. Doing good, doing good. Hard knot and rhinos complete. Just going down now. Celebrating. Celebrating with chocolate buttons. Leaving a very wet Ambleside.
Oof. We're getting this off-road riding in as well. So what should be easy riding is actually turning out to be worse than hard not pass and rhinos pass. Would you agree, Rachel? Yes. What's hard? That was that was the easy part of the day. This yeah. The hard not and rhinos was the easy part of the day. Easier. It always is. Always is. You, you think, oh, that's going to be hard. That's going to be hard, and these little short, sharp things. That. Ooh. Yeah. So it was a bit grey when we left Kendall this morning but the sun's coming out, it's about lunchtime and we've got this beautiful view over there looking over the dales nice So we stopped at the new inn in Clapham last night, a couple of grey clouds, but on the whole this has probably been the best start to the, uh, to the, to the days we've had away. Got some blue skies over there. So we're riding all the way home today from here, so it's going to be uh, down into Colne and uh, near, near Nelson and then up, up to Hebden Stall and back down into Hebden Bridge. So we're just leaving Clapham and uh, nice day, nice morning to set off on which uh, we haven't had so far on this trip but we've got it today, final day Well it's gone a bit grey from the optimism of the start So since we've uh, left Settle, managed to make some good progress and we are now at the uh, River Ribble just crossing it, quite a big river Ta -da. So we've just come through Barnoldswick and making his way to Colne and then it'd be up the big hill to Widdup. Uh, we're just on the canal at the moment. So it'll be Widdup, Hepton Stall, Hebden Bridge, Sorbe. Looking down onto Colne, and then we've got to make his way all the way up there, up to up to Widdup, up there somewhere. Whew. So we're about halfway up the hill to Widdup and we just found this little bench to have us wrap a cheese wrap, a cheese and bean wrap and some crisps and we'll be making our way the final bit Certainly one hell of a pull up from Colne on that Sustrans Route 68 Whew. But it sure is beautiful though our road is going up over there So that over there is Calderdale's mountain pass <sighs> Nearly at the top of Wid Widdup Just a little bit further to go there but we've come up Oh, from down there. It's been a graft. It has that. So here we are, just going up the final little bit towards Widdup Reservoir. Um, quite a steep hill. We were following the Sustrans route number 68 from Colne. And um, very beautiful road this. Cycled these many times. And this is Hepton Stall. So what did I learn from his little outing? Well, the trailer is absolutely brilliant. It's so light as well. It's not it's not heavy at all. I was really amazed how light those bob trailers are. So quite impressed with that. Um, 
but I think for Canada, we might have to um, leave that at home because it will save on um, baggage costs, but also it just encourages you to pack more. And for, the, for this Canada trip, we re really need to be um, light as we possibly can. So I think we'll probably leave the trailer at home for that trip. Um, other things, the derailleur uh, keeps on getting a bit of chain suck when you're going down onto the smallest ring. And I think that's just because the rear mech doesn't have a spring strong enough to keep the chain um, from coming away from the chain ring when it's um, going onto the smallest ring. So just need to sort that out. But other than that, it's running, it's running really smooth. I might put a bigger rear cassette on the back just to give us a bit more for the steep uphills that we might have. But um, yeah, it's, it's pretty much what, um, what we need. I've ordered some uh, knobbly tires, so I'll get rid of the mud guards and put on some knobbly tires for this for the Canada trip because it is mainly going to be off-road. So um, yeah, it should look even meaner. <laughs> 